Jeffrey Combs live in St. Louis, Missouri with a group of enlightened entrepreneurs in one of my favorite cities, St. Louis, Missouri. Let's give us a hand. I have Carl Italiano from Savannah, Georgia, and Ricky Tischler, who has hosted me in St. Louis before, and a series of other exceptional people that are my friends and my clients. It's my absolute privilege to be here with you in one of my favorite cities, lifelong St. Louis Cardinal fan, one of the greatest sports and restaurant towns in America, so I'm right here. Now, my content for you today is going to be on your dialogue with money and how it affects your emotional state. Your dialogue with money will have an effect on your business, it'll have an effect on what you attract, but we're gonna break down what your dialogue with money really means. If you have challenges asking, receiving, and deserving, it will show up in your money skills. If you've gone to college and received an education, you have a Bachelor of Science, a Bachelor of Arts, an MBA, a PhD, that's the educational system. Now the educational system sets you up to be able to create your money value through the value of what a job is worth. A job will pay you what a job is worth, but if you're in free enterprise and you seek to create what the free market will bear, it will be your responsibility, meaning my ability to respond. Now unfortunately what happens to a lot of people who do not have skills in free enterprise and entrepreneurship, their first engagement in free enterprise creates a reaction. And that reaction creates a state called fight or flight. Even though a lot of the population wants to have a business from the comfort of their home, what happens to a lot of people once they enter their home and they have a business is they have entrepreneurial seizure. They seize up. They get overwhelmed, they get anxious, and they spend a lot of their time getting ready to get ready. Now when I ask the average person that I coach and encounter why they own a business, most of society is overwhelmed. They, they do not know. They don't know why they own a business. They think they own a business for freedom, but the real, biz, the real reason that you own a business is for this, for profit. Because if your business does not have profit, you don't have a business. What you have is you have a nonprofit organization with the discomfort of your home. Now your business is gonna be a direct reflection of your inspiration. How inspired you are, how anxious you are, will determine whether you have a business for profit or a non-profit business. It's, it's not normal, it's conditional that a large percent of you will have some anxiety early in your business career, in your entrepreneurial career. Don't buy into it that it's normal, understand that it's conditional. Now you can overcome these conditions relatively quickly. Now if you own a business, you require enough money to create the overhead. So if you've had a job and you're accustomed to achieving five to $10,000 a month, that's your standard of living. So that means you're gonna to have to recreate those same standards in a time frame that's conducive and realistic to that happening. Unfortunately, what most people do, Michael, and you know this being a serial entrepreneur, is most people have a greater expectation than their skill level. They expect to be compensated what they had in a job in a business without the mindset, the skills, or the habits of the vocation. Now, Rachel's one of my clients here. Rachel's a young woman who I'm gonna assist in six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, like her friend Louise, on how to be and stay a skilled entrepreneur. Now, your dialogue with money is a direct reflection of dialogue with self. Money is an inanimate object. It's, there's very little real money, tangible money in today's world. Most of it's e-commerce, it's intangible, it's plastic money, it doesn't come from, it doesn't have any gold behind it anymore, so it's inflation money. It's your responsibility to learn how to create money in free enterprise. How does money get created? It's gonna get created through your value and your service. Now your dialogue with it means how you interact with self from it. Now you've been conditioned to trade time for money, so that is normal to you, that's conditional to you. You're, you receive a check every two weeks for your service and for what the job values you. A job will pay you what a job is worth, but for you to become exceptional in free enterprise, it means you have to master the skills and master the emotions that will create the money. Now, I'm a new mysticist, means that I understand the laws that govern money. 
I also understand the history of money, the Federal Reserve Banking System, what happens in 1911, 1913, 1932, and 1964. These are historical dates in money history where the United States over a series of years starts to go off the gold silver standard, meaning that money is now inflation money, FICA money. So it's your responsibility to understand how you will create your money in free enterprise. Now the way this will happen is you will start to feel worthy. If you do not feel worthy of the creation of money, then you are relegated to being in a low self-esteem, a low emotional vibrational energy, and you'll attract your reality, people and situations to fulfill those feelings. As you begin to let go, separate your feelings from the events that shape them, as you move into a state called emotional etheric power, you'll begin to let go of the events that shape your feelings about being uncomfortable for asking, receiving, and deserving. Now what happens to a lot of really good people who are talented and, and have desire is a lot of them get so overwhelmed about the thought and the process of changing their identity. It's a process. It's a six months, 12 month, 18 month, 24 month process where you begin to feel, stay, and be comfortable in this transition. And it's a space where it's an allow space. You begin to allow yourself to not put pressure on yourself. You begin to allow yourself to understand it is a transition. So your ability to ASK, ASK. You're not asking for money, you learn to ask for commitments. Money is the end result, but it's the asking the questions in a sequence that allow you to establish whether you have a qualified buyer, a qualified prospect, a qualified teammate. But if you have anxiety about the outcome, then what you'll end up doing is you'll end up avoiding this process. And unfortunately, this is what many people do. They get so overwhelmed about the possibility of the engagement that they talk themselves out of it. And they spend a lot of their time getting ready to get ready. Once again, this is conditional. It's not normal. You can overcome this in a relatively short period of time. So here's a couple of terms that are important in your money transition. First of all, the word deserve, D-E-R-E, D-E-R, deserve, -E 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 -E. deserve. Deserve comes from the Latin term, da, sir, v, a, day of service. So for you to be able to deserve, it's gonna be your service and your value that you start to create in the free market. So deserve and receive. Receiving is another term that's contradictory to a large percent of society because they've been conditioned to give. And so we've been conditioned that it's better to give than receive, so it doesn't mean that receiving has equal foothold as giving does. You've been conditioned to believe that giving is more important than receiving. Well, they require equal balance. You're required to become a skilled receiver, and that comes from your ability to ask for an outcome. As you become more skilled at asking, you'll be more skilled at being able to establish who's a qualified buyer, who's a non-qualified buyer, where to devote your time and energy without feeling guilty and or resentful. Also in, in your dialogue with money, your dialogue with money, if you've been conditioned that money is bad, that money is the root of all evil, if money will lead to other situations, now, there's people in the audience right now, their eyes are rolling, lemons, cherries, and oranges as I'm bringing this up. But if you've been conditioned that money, if your money conditioning is not conducive to the creation of it, then what you end up having is a money avoidance. And a money avoidance relegates you to trading time for money in a place called the job. Now, if you want to create what the free market bears, then there's network marketing, there's direct sales, there's real estate, there's free enterprise, there's arbitrage marketing, there's all types of ways that you can be in business delivering service and value. So if you want to find out more about how I can assist you to improve your dialogue with money, you can contact me on Facebook, you can inbox me. My name is Jeffrey Combs here in St. Louis, Missouri, delivering content to a very exceptional group of enlightened entrepreneurs. Have a great afternoon.